Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I am Kukule Tukele. On the show today, we look at the best way to manage your finances. And one question we often asked is, uh, what should I be asking my financial planner? Joining me now is CFP professional, Sydney Sigese. So good to have you with us as always, Sydney. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yes. Let's uh, touch on CFP, Certified Financial Planners, which mm. is what you are. Sure. Maybe I'll become one one day if <laughs> you uh, give me enough pointers. Uh, but uh, basically, the key objectives that one should be looking for when you're sit down with a certified financial professional, uh, what should they be? Sure. The biggest one is trust mm -hmm. and the CFPs or certified financial uh, professionals, mm -hmm. they go through rigorous training and it includes training on ethics, values, integrity. Mm -hmm. So when you speak to a CFP, they should really demonstrate those qualities. Uh, gone are the days where they, you know, advisors used to push products just to earn commission mm. and the uh, CFP is there really to to ensure that you reach your goals either financial goals or short-term uh, goals uh, you know it, they, they help you to have a, a, a bigger picture of your financial planning for South African consumers Sydney what I've picked up is that mm. there's confusion in the market as sure. to who are these individuals that can provide you with sound financial advice you hear CFPs you hear wealth managers being thrown into the mix private mm. bankers investment strategists are they all the same thing or uh, how does one double check and ensure that these are qualified professionals yeah the CFP designation is uh, often um, done via financial planning institute which is an institute similar to SICA of the accountants. Uh -huh. So they have to really uh, authenticate you to be a CFP. Uh, a wealth manager can be a wealth manager, but if he's not, he or she is not authenticated by FPI, they cannot ca call themselves CFP. So you need to be to have uh, that authentication, and uh, you have to qualify towards uh, CPD points. Uh -huh. uh, have regular update of, of your knowledge of financial planning. So a uh, wealth manager without that authentication is not a CFP. Uh -huh. <laughs> so make sure that they're registered yes. and the authentication takes place there. True. I want us to walk ab talk about the first initial meeting. Mm. So Google comes to Sydney and says, Sydney, you know, this is my plan uh, yes. financially. You mentioned trust is the key True. issue here, but how much disclosure do I as a potential client also need to give you? Mm. you have, as a consumer, you've got all the right to really interrogate uh, your, your advisor the first meeting, they, they need to take you through a six-step process. The first one is to establish that relationship. And mm -hmm. that relationship you know, talks to what their uh, background is, their experience, their track record, and that clientele, and remuneration policy. Are they earning uh, a commission only? Or are, do they charge fees? Mm. You know? Uh, so the first step is, is really to, to establish that relationship. Secondly, the financial planner should also tell you how is he, he she or she going to, to ensure that you reach, uh, or together with you, you reach uh, the financial uh, uh, goals. Thirdly, they need to evaluate your current financial status and identify the gaps. Thirdly, together with you, recommend the appropriate uh, route to take to reach those goals, uh -huh. monitor those uh, recommendations, and uh, obviously ensure that uh, uh, you know all, all, all steps are very uh, quantifiable and they, they can actually be reviewed after every year. So okay. monitoring the whole six-step process is quite key. And <coughs> along the way, as a consumer, you, you get to know your, your financial advisor or certified financial planner. Uh, by the manner in which they, they you know, they present themselves, mm -hmm. and also a certified financial planner should uh, should not over promise and under deliver. Uh, they need to to keep to their words, and and update you as often as possible. Mm. And um, an annual review is, is is a prudent way of of ensuring that uh, you know that you meet your goals every step of the way. So it's like it's more like a journey, and the <laughs> CFP is there to see you through that. A very important journey, clearly, as, as you alluded to. You touched on products a moment ago, and I think that's a very important element. Uh, yeah. how, how imperative is it for me as a client to understand the products that, that I'm being offered, instead of just being told, this is perfect for you, yes. put your money in here, and I'll take care of the rest? Yeah. The, the trend, historically, was that most people, especially the black, uh, without, without being <laughs> racist, mm -hmm. they, they happen to be overinsured. They've got more life cover, more funeral, funeral policies, yes, funeral yep. policies. And, and 
firstly, it's because of, of uh, product pushers. The advisors, they just push products to, 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 to gain that commission because live products have got a huge commission mm. and, and you know, they mis-sell the products. So um, the financial advisor or certified financial planner should actually explain uh, each product and how it meets your objectives as a consumer. Mm -hmm. if, if they're selling you a risk cover, it, it, should set, uh, it, it should really meet a particular objective mm -hmm. instead of, of really pushing for, again, um, in, in an initial interview with your CFP, you would have identified whether uh, they're after money or are they after your interests. Mm -hmm. yes, so uh, product knowledge is quite important. And again, having a, a CFP looking after your affairs doesn't mean you should relax. You should be actively involved. And uh, recommendations uh, should be a joint venture between your uh, advisor and yourself and should be uh, also knowledgeable in terms of uh, 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 products in the market. So at any point, you should be able to feel comfortable and feel Very free much. to call up your CFP and say, Sydney, mm. let's look at Satrix such and such and various sure. product offerings. Yes. Uh, I, I want to also pick your brain on the costs involved. Yeah. Some uh, financial prof professionals actually offer you a once-off free mm -hmm. consultation. But from there on, what kind of disclosure should we be looking for when it comes to costs and fees of products as well as the services of the CFP? Yes. Uh, there's a new buzzword called RDR or mm -hmm. Retail Distribution Review. Um, and we really adopted it from the UK uh, methodology of, of, you know, remuneration of, of advisors. Um, and the RDR says, uh, you know, the intention is to scrap commission on products and rather push for fees. There are lots of debates uh, as to whether RDR is applicable to South Africa or not. So um, a CFP may uh, recommend commission and 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 provide you with reasons for that, or a fee. And uh, you know, if, if a certified financial planner is not aware of what fee to charge, they may consult with the legislated commission and uh, request that uh, the fee be equivalent to commission. And, and that's how they can determine their value. And I think the RDR came into place because most often the financial advisors or CFPs they could end commission um, for free, which means mm. year in, year out, they end commission, but they're not servicing their clients. Yeah. So with a fee, uh, a client is ensured of regular updates, and if there's a fee review, they, they can easily justify uh, increasing fees instead of, you know... Being paid per product. Per product. Now you pay them as though it's a consultation sure. with your doctor. Definitely. Which makes a lot more sense for South African consumers. Mm. But Sydney, on this relationship, you mentioned that it is a journey, which sure. it is, uh, the journey to financial wellness or financial freedom. Mm. Can one change their CFPs or is it advisable to have more than one financial planner? Would that make sense at all? It's advisable to, ha to, to have one financial planner because he or she will have a full, a holistic view of your financial uh, planning and your journey. Mm. The only time you may consider changing is again going back to over-promising and under-delivering. Yeah. So every year, if your financial planner promised to do such and such a thing and they don't uh, meet those objectives, then you, you may uh, review, it's in, in your right to review the service that you receive. And because there's a lot of competition, there are lots and lots of uh, financial advisors and CFPs out there. So uh, it's, it's, it's a really competitive industry and, and you, know, you need to, to choose a CFP who, who is really geared to, to meet your objectives. Mm -hmm. okay. You mentioned being active and also participating mm -hmm. in the portfolio management of, sure. of your wealth. Uh, how often then should there be some kind of meeting with your CFP to review the progress of uh, your wealth creation? Sure. Every quarter, once a year? Yeah, at the beginning of, uh, of your interview and depending on how complex your structure is, uh, you, might want to, you may want to meet every quarter but once there's an established plan of action, uh, an annual review is, is quite uh, okay, you know. And again, it depends. It's, it's situational, depending on on how your your uh, investments or or financial planning structure is, you know. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of things to consider uh, uh, within a plan. And the certified financial planner should take you through uh, each step of the way. <laughs> Well, let's recap on some of the takeaways from this discussion. Sydney, talking to your CFP 101, what yes. should we remember from this evening's conversation? I think having a plan doesn't have to be uh, overwhelming. 
um, you know, planning for the future actually makes you to enjoy life today. Because usually people think uh, financial plan means you have to, uh, you know... Be stingy. <laughs> very <almost>. much. <laughs> it's not a stingy <laughs> exercise. Exactly. You know, it helps you to, uh, to have a, a structured way of, of reaching your goals whilst you're in enjoying your, your current life. And just to close off with, uh, mm. for family members, uh, is it advisable for you know, married or unmarried cohabitating couples to have one financial plan or advisor, or can we split things up? Yeah, depending on uh, whether they, you know, the couple share the same budget, home, home budget, if they share the same budget, they, it's prudent to have one financial plan. But if they manage their own budget separately, then they may have independent CFPs. Mm -hmm. okay. Sydney, well, we'll leave it there for this evening. Thank you so much for uh, giving us insights on the important things to take into consideration. We're speaking to a certified financial planner. Make sure that they're registered, and you can double-check that uh, with the uh, FPI. Also, ensure that you understand the product offerings that they give you, and uh, continual review, review rather, of uh, the performance that your CFP professional has uh, alluded to. Well, that's where we leave it for tonight. A big thank you once more to Sydney Sigese, a CFP professional joining us this evening. Remember that we want to hear from you, so tweet any of your comments, suggestions, and feedback to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag finance410 or to myself at Gokumfupi on Twitter. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.